Hello and welcome. Here we are with the Christian Basics series. And uh, Pastor John here, we're going to be looking at the doctrine of the fall today. So, I've got something to read to you from the Bible. It's Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 to 5. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. God bless reading over his word. So, hello and welcome again. So, we're looking at the fall. In this passage here, who is talking here in the above Bible passage? Yes, it is Satan, the devil. And recall we had mentioned him in the earlier segment. So what happened in the Garden of Eden? What went wrong? Let's look at the doctrine of the fall here. It's the teaching, what the Bible teaches us about the fall. So, in short, our human ancestors, Adam and Eve, they gave into temptation and they transgressed against God. Right? They, they, they violated um, God's um, uh, one uh, God-given rule not to eat from the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and, good and evil. So, what happened then was that it results in a broken relationship with God. And uh, that has an impact on us today and still does. And um, basically, as a result of this broken relationship we have with God, um, it makes us lose our innocence, right? And so we start doing, it makes us, you know, start doing bad things, which uh, ultimately leads to death. And so that's what the Bible reveals us here. Um, so as we read here in the third chapter of Genesis, remember last time we had mentioned Satan and um, he's a fallen angelic creature, yeah, a demon. And um, he talks to Eve in this passage through a snake um convincing her uh basically that god cannot be trusted uh, especially in what he says right so that's what his goal was and uh unfortunately he succeeded as um what happened here was um the um this was a challenge to god and god's word so um, how did the devil do this? How did he accomplish this? So, as we look at the uh, passage again, we realize uh, Satan often starts his deception or his schemes uh, uh, with a question. Uh, and in, in this case, he already distorted God's word. Did God really say, you must not eat from any of the trees in the garden? God bless you, his word 3.1. Did God really say you must not eat from any of the trees in the garden? Right? So instead of trusting uh, God, obeying God's only primary command, as we said, not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, um, both Adam and Eve knew about, right? Because Adam was with Eve at the moment of her temptation, knew about this um, command, God's command. So uh, Eve enters a dialogue with the serpent. I mean, not even questioning, you know, why, why is an animal you're talking to me? So she's listening to the wrong voice, effectively. Oh, dear. So what happens next? Um, they, uh, they give in to the, temp the enemy's temptation, the devil's temptation through free will. And both of them, Adam and Eve, uh, eat the forbidden food. That's in Genesis 3, uh, verse 6. So what happens is there's consequences, disastrous consequences, um, which Satan uh, conveniently did not mention. Right, The, uh, the tempter, Satan, also called the tempter, uh, entices us, all of us, and uh, uh, tries to coax us into something uh, that seems to be uh, admirable or useful or helpful, but he, he, he doesn't mention um, everything, as di different from God, who always tells us everything from beginning to end, what we need to know. So that's one of the ways he operates. 
So from of these consequences, the consequences include within the as God pronounces his judgment, uh, the serpent is forced to crawl on the ground. Uh, there's enmity, right? Uh, um, division between the serpent and the woman. There's pain during childbirth and the woman uh, being subjected to the man. And then there's the need for humanity to work for food. And there's a big one. Here's a big one. That is the expulsion uh, from the garden, right? The fall of mankind as God, as part of his judgment, um, uh, expelled uh, Adam and Eve um, from the garden. So what else happened? With the doctrine of the fall, um, sin, death, and spiritual separation from God are introduced into the world. Well, I repeat that. As we see that in Genesis chapter 4, I encourage you, read Genesis chapter 4. So with the doctrine of the fall, so sin, death, and spiritual separation from God are introduced into the world. And um, we're going to look at the doctrine of uh, sin and salvation in a bit more detail. So we'll deal with that a little bit more um, uh, later as part of the Sigma, uh, series. So I'll take a closer look at that. What matters here is that we understand that the fall of mankind uh, is, is a real event in history. Right, it is Adam and Eve are real people, and uh, Satan exists, and sin and evil is real, right? So those those are the things we want to remember, and it's exclusive. Again, only the Bible tells us about um, how this all connects and interconnects and relates um, um, to um, to each other. So um, this is a true and a and an important. Uh, true spiritual dimension, uh, which we must not deny in any way, right? The the, the realm of evil, um, the fallen angelic realm. The Bible tells us about that many times. So what happens is we see that um, what we inherit from our uh, first two human ancestors is uh, a broken sin nature, We uh, also called original sin. Original sin is not the sin that Adam and Eve committed, but the what we inherit as uh, from Adam and Eve is the broken sin nature. That's what we mean by original sin. All right. So, um, so we can see here very importantly is we can get a glimpse of the reality of Satan, the glimpse of his evil nature, and as well as the demonic realm. If you go into the New Testament, then into the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, um, uh, Paul, uh, uh, 6, verse 12, you read much more about uh, the uh, truth and the activity and existence of the demonic realm. Uh, why does this matter? This matters because it helps us understand that in our own suffering and helplessness, in the face of sin and evil, uh, we by ourselves, cannot make ourselves right with God in our own strength or doing good deeds or good works or um, trying to do that. That's in Romans chapter 3, verse 20. So what we then ask is, is, is there someone who can do what we cannot do? Is there someone who can do what we cannot do? And this is here where we realize that... Uh, uh, we have um, a need for a divine redeemer, and this divine redeemer is our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to be looking at him uh, as in the following, God willing, in the following uh, segment, um, Christian basics, right? So, what is interesting is when you look at Genesis three fifteen, is that Jesus and the coming of Jesus is announced in Genesis three fifteen where we read, he shall bruise you on the head, which means that um, Christ will uh, deal the decisive blow to Satan by dying on a cross. We call that Proto-Evangelion, that is the first gospel. And um, that is something to understand is that um, the um, as this, uh, the judgment 
uh, uh, occurs, um, God does not um, cur he, he does not curse um, Adam and Eve. Right, he curses the ground. He 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 places a, a curse on the ground, but he does not curse Adam and Eve, and so that's the promise we have. Um, is in this uh, early gospel, which he puts into place already uh, at the time, just as he's expelling Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, and so um, the enemy has a little bit of a. It seems. Uh, a bit of a victory. Satan has a victory in causing God's death, uh, where it says, the Bible tells us, you shall bruise him on the heel. Um, so yet as we continue, as we follow along the biblical events, um, ultimately, um, this leads to Satan's own defeat. Jesus defeats Satan on the cross. So we're going to take a look at that uh, also. So, um, in the meantime, right, Satan is still active and alive. He's he's part. Uh, he's uh, the uh, he's the um, the main you know leader of the boss of the demons, so to say, and he's active and alive. And we must not deny his existence. Um, so, um, but in the end, uh, Jesus Christ at the second coming on Judgment Day will uh, do away with him and all evil. Right. So. That's just something very important to understand. So a little homework here for you. So make sure you read all of this, right? Read Genesis chapter 3 and 4, right? Um, that's the outworkings of the fall. And it's a big one. You want to, don't want to miss these two chapters. It's important for, for us all, for you and me and all of us to understand our broken um, sin state um, and the inherited sin nature, our our, um, our, um, um, uh, the original sin, so to say, uh, which we inherited from Adam and Eve, from our, our real, real people, real events from our human ancestors. Okay, so that's a, just a summary here now. Um, so we have basically an overview of the fall. Um, that is the beginning of the problem that we have, namely our fall and broken sin state which we are all born with. And again, we cannot overcome it in our own strength. Apart from Christ, I repeat it, we cannot overcome this broken sin state, state on our own. We're all born broken sinners uh, apart from Christ, right? And it is Jesus who intercedes on our behalf. Um, so as believers, he restores um, our strange relationship with God. Uh, how? Through himself, as God in the flesh, and uh, so we're going to be looking at uh, Jesus Christ next. So again, the description, there's a video link for an article you can access and uh, um, learn more about the fall in more detail, right? Again, you can use this material freely and uh, yeah, get into the Bible, read, study it on a regular basis and grow in your relationship with Jesus and uh, that's why God, our Lord Jesus, um, gave us his word, the Bible, for us to grow in a personal relationship with him. All right, so important uh, as we move on to the doctrine of Jesus Christ, uh, Christology, Jesus Christ as Lord, um, remind yourself um, that Jesus Christ came into the picture to save people from the results of the fall, that is Satan, sin, death, and evil. All right, so I'll repeat. So Jesus came to save us, save people from the results of the fall, mankind, Satan, sin, death, and evil. And that's at the doctrine, um, this doctrine is basically at the heart of God's uh, salvation plan for, for all mankind, right? So as believers, as Christians, we embrace and uh, turn to our Lord Jesus Christ and give him thanks for... Um, for what he did and accomplished thereby um, as part of his as part of God's salvation plan. So amen. We'll end with prayer. So Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for this blessed day and thank you for revealing us the importance, the teaching of the fall, and how we inherited our broken sin state, uh, being estranged from you, and how 
yeah, all of the sin, Satan, death, evil entered into the world and uh, has been with us ever since, uh, which you had overcome. You have overcome on the cross. Uh, however, we understand that uh, until your second coming on Judgment Day, um, evil, sin, Satan, death, devil will be a reality for us that we um, not only acknowledge but ask you to protect us as believers as the body of Christ and to look after us protect us from the evil one the devil and uh, thank you for looking after us Lord Jesus thank you for revealing all of this in your word we thank you and love you and praise you in your holy name Lord Jesus we pray amen and always remember the best Bible is an open Bible. Please join us again soon.